Hello guys and welcome back to Oxygen Not Included. In one of the last videos I showed or discussed a method to run your steam turbines at maximum efficiency and for that video I received a lot of comments such as to flash up further out and that's exactly what I'm going to do in this video. At the end of the video I will also show on how to do some automation to basically feed uh, your steam turbines with the ideal amount and temperature of hot steam. But first of all, let's talk about losses a bit more. So I've created two identical setups here. On the left side we have steam of 426 degrees Celsius and on the right side we have 203 degrees Celsius for that same steam amount. Uh, so this turbine should actually operate at maximum efficiency, that's ex at least what we are expecting. And yeah, therefore it hopefully will uh, heat up the hydrogen behind it a lot less than uh, on the left hand side. As you can see it's almost perfectly balanced out. 0.07 degrees Celsius on this side for 100 kilograms of hydrogen and on the other side we have 0.2 degrees. So if I just pause the game now and start both turbines at the same time and let the game run for a bit, you will eventually see that uh, this, the hydrogen on the left hand side will heat up a lot faster than on the right hand side. Yeah, I think I can pause already. As you can see we have reached 1.5, 1, 1, even 2 degrees somewhere, while on the right hand side we only have 0 0.6 something, even though it's the same thermal mass and as you can see 850 watts where this 848 so pretty much balanced out. Yeah, where are these losses actually coming from? Well first of all the machine itself has losses of 4k DTUs. Uh, it doesn't matter how hot your steam is it will always have the same losses of 4k DTUs so no difference at this point for both machines. The real difference comes from the heat transfer rate from the steam. Uh, the steam turbine will transfer 10% of the heat from the steam it has sucked in into heat right at uh, the location of the machine itself. So if we start from steam temperature of around 420 over just 200 degrees, we will transfer a lot more heat uh, up to this machine. And therefore we will require additional cooling as well. So without further ado, I've done a lot of theory crafting in the background. I'm just gonna present you with the results now. Um, I've decided to basically pick five spots uh, for five different um, steam temperatures and compare them for cooling. If you decide to run your steam temperature at 125 degrees, which is the absolute minimum for your steam turbine, you will require 4.7% more cooling than if you decided at the sweet spot of 200 degrees Celsius. So 4.7% is not that much, but still you can argue um, <laughs> yeah, basically that you don't want to have these losses and therefore uh, implement some automation, for example. Then next would be if you run your steam turbine at 150 degrees uh, hot steam, you will require 2.86% additional cooling over uh, running the steam at 200 degrees Celsius exactly. So the closer you basically come to the 200 degrees Celsius for your steam, the lower the losses will be. And the same goes if you higher than uh, 200 degrees for your steam, for example at 300 degrees we will require 91% additional cooling and if you run your steam turbine at 400 degrees steam temperature you will require 182% additional cooling. So just for comparison if you decide to run your steam turbine at 200 degrees Celsius you can uh, run one aqua tuner with super coolant for every 12 steam turbines roughly. But if you run your steam turbines at 400 degrees steam temperature, for instance, then you would require an aqua tuner with super coolant for every four steam turbines. So a huge loss of efficiency if you don't optimize the steam temperature for your steam turbine. And also there's another um, 
mechanic behind it, which I don't really like, to be honest. Also not physically uh, correct. Um, basically, no matter what the steam temperature is, as you can see here, uh, the water is always emitted at 95 degrees Celsius. And only 10% of the heat from the steam is converted or transferred to the steam turbine itself. What is actually happening with the remaining 90%? And that's yeah, that's the hard and rough story. This 90% heat is for most part deleted by the game and therefore not available to yeah, generate any additional power from it. So you're basically wasting a lot of heat if you decide to run your uh, steam turbines not at a perfect steam, steam temperature, so to say. What does that basically tell us? What is the sweet spot for our steam turbine? Well, we will always have to make sure that the steam below it is as close as possible to 200 degrees Celsius. And also I've made another little testing over here that I would like to share with you as well. So in some occasions the steam turbines are becoming too hot, like this one is at 1719 degrees at the moment and that is because it's not being cooled of course and the steam turbine only will provide power if it runs below 100 degrees Celsius. So and the interesting question in this situation is uh, whether it will still produce the 4 kdTU's heat or not. For that I'm just gonna seal this uh, room and we're gonna check the temperature of the nuclear fallout inside. Let this run for a bit and as you can see uh, the temperature is not rising it's going to be the same so at least in this situation we don't need any automation the game will so to say take care of it automatically we are not generating any waste for, uh, waste heat from nothing in this situation talking about automation that's gonna be the issue how you basically make sure to run your steam turbines at maximum efficiency for that i've set up this little design here in that case the heat is gonna come from from this magma over here and we are running two steam turbines from it both have very little automation as you will see. Uh, for the steam turbines themselves the only thing we do is measure the temperature right, right below them and say if the temperature is above 195 degrees send a green signal and therefore start the steam turbines. So that way we make sure that the steam turbines always run at around 200 degrees Celsius. Uh, then additionally we have some heat transfer going on in this room. We basically uh, open and close this mechanized airlock. Every time this mechanized airlock is closed there's heat transfer going on between left and right hand side and every time the mechanized airlock is open there's no heat transfer going on. So and for that we are gonna use a th and another uh, thermal sensor over here it is detecting the temperature if above 195 degrees uh, please open this mechanized airlock so the room doesn't heat up any further and we will have a constant or at least for the main part constant temperature but unfortunately there is a little more automation required for this as well because in some situations uh, the steam turbines are not running because the temperature below them is too low and also the mechanized airlock is not being closed because the temperature is too high so there's kind of a mismatch between those sensors and for that we require additional automation. So we basically say that if both uh, thermal sensors send a red signal and therefore uh, yeah, there's no additional heat uh, requested from the airlock and also there is no um, heat deleted by the steam turbine at the same uh, moment. In that case we just put an AND gate and put that to another OR gate down here. So we are basically adding one more condition so that the mechanized airlock will also operate in that situation. Now I'm gonna let this run a bit. As you can see the mechanized airlock is closed just for a short moment. There's a lot of heat transfer going on very fast depending on your materials. In this case I have steam. And then the thermal sensor has detected very fast that the temperature is becoming too high in this room. 
then it's gonna take a little more until the temperature has spread into this room and basically this uh, thermal sensor has detected that the steam temperature below the steam turbine is high enough to actually run it therefore now we are deleting heat and the heat is now being deleted while uh, no additional uh, heat is added to the room so we are basically waiting now until more heat is deleted and this thermal sensor will send a signal which happened right now as you can see it only closes for a very short moment because there's a huge temperature difference also between those rooms and therefore this uh, mechanized airlock will add more heat to the room and additionally i have of course set up the thermal aqua tuner in this room it is providing the cooling for steam turbines as you can see here is a little bit of plumbing with a little liquid reservoir as well and I had to automate that as well. So I'm basically uh, measuring the temperature in the cooling loop with this liquid pipe thermal sensor and I'm saying every time the temperature is above 20 degrees Celsius the steam turbine should start to work which is actually now. And it's not working because the pipe is blocked. Let's check. Ah, oh, there's a pipe missing. That's all. Yeah, no, it is operating. Sorry for that. As you can see, um, the, uh, the as you can see, the aqua tuner is now cooling down the water because it has detected a temperature above 20 degrees. So this system is pretty much stable. I haven't encountered any issues here, even though I let that run for like 10 or 20 cycles. It will of course drain all the heat from this magma and therefore eventually stop in the end. And yeah, what I've also have to say is that of course this is not the method to gain or to generate uh, as much power as fast as possible from the magma. It is designed to uh, basically generate as much power as possible from this magma over time with the lowest amount of losses to the cooling loop as well. So I think I have covered most of the topics for this. If you have any further questions, please let me know in the comments below. Uh, otherwise, I would appreciate if you consider subscribing to the channel, as I am uh, basically posting updates frequently. Thanks and goodbye.